The Flipper Zero is capable of grabbing certain signals out of the air and replaying them with ease. But what if you don't even need to grab the signal in the first place? Hello everyone. What I have for you today is a demo on brute forcing linear multi-code series door controls using a Flipper Zero. Originally, multi-code was owned by Stanley Electronics. But it was purchased by Linear Access after Stanley stopped selling garage door openers. These controls were quite commonly used in commercial and residential applications. Barrier-free door operators, gates, stuff like that. The technology is now extremely dated, but its use is ongoing to this day. You can still purchase these products from Linear and other door control suppliers. These wireless door control receivers are powered by 24 volts and they operate in the 300 megahertz band generally sometimes 310. They use 10 dip switches to set the activation code. Here is the dip switches on the receiver. And the dip switches on a transmitter. Multi-code units were made with this style of connector so that they could be mounted directly to a garage door opener's power terminal. but they can be connected using just some spade connectors and multi-core wire like I've done for this bench setup here. The remotes for these receivers have pretty poor transmission range. The fact that the receivers are generally mounted inside of a metal enclosure of some sort doesn't help either. For example, the aluminum cases used by automatic door openers, they're pretty good at blocking the signal from reaching the receiver. This is usually circumvented by drilling a small hole into the case so that the antenna is able to be pulled through and the receiver is actually able to get the transmission. On that note, in my experience, the antenna found on these multi-code units is always black. Being able to remember what color antenna certain door control receivers use can be quite helpful in quickly determining what brute force protocol to use. That's if the antenna is visible anyways. So, that aside, Let's discuss brute forcing these. The reason this product can be brute forced is due to the use of the binary dip switches. There are 10 switches and each switch only has two possible positions, on or off, meaning there are only 1,024 possible codes. Now, 1,024 seems like a fairly large number, but using the flipper to transmit every single one of those codes five times in a row will only take about three minutes and 50 seconds or so. So we'll navigate to the brute force app and scroll down till we find the linear listings and as I said earlier there can be 310 or 300 megahertz we're gonna go with the 300 megahertz as the 310 is a little bit rare now once you hit start it's gonna move pretty fast through the sequences of numbers by the time you've noticed that the correct code has been received, which can be realized in a number of ways, the gate or door opening, hearing the relay fire, etc., the correct code could possibly be a few numbers back. Now, the good thing is, after hitting stop, you can move backwards or forwards, one combination at a time. This lets you navigate through all the potentially correct codes and hit send until you locate the one that opened the door. So we're going to hit resend. Nothing. Go back one, resend, back one, resend, back another one, resend. And there was the relay firing. So we can go ahead and save. And backing out and going to the saved sub gigahertz signals. When selecting the emulate screen, it will actually display the dip switch settings, which is pretty handy because then you could purchase a compatible remote and program that to work as well. So that's all I have for you today. I hope this uh, educated you at least a little bit in the process of brute forcing a receiver like this. 
If you have any questions about the content of this video or have any requests for other Flipper Zero content, please let me know in the comment section. That's all I got. Thanks for watching.